Here we go. All right, welcome everybody. Sorry. We got lots of people here. Okay. I took my dog back back screen off for you. <laughs> All right. Okay, we've got Charlie, Tony, Lisa, me, Lisa, Brian, Norris, Jerry, Sam, Matt. Nine. Everybody's here. Okay. We all good to get started? Just uh, give me some nods. Uh, we're recording. Um, all right, uh, call the meeting to order. Please rise for a moment of silence in the Pledge of Allegiance. And the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Secretary, would you take the roll call, please? Ms. Bowman. Here. Mr. Falgator. Here. Mr. Fox. Here. Mr. Gano. Here. Mr. Hurley. Here. Mr. Conacher. Here. Mr. Norris. Here. Mr. Ms. Yelovich? Sorry. Here. <laughs> Mr. Zimmerman? Here. Okay. Nine present, zero absent. Great. Thank you. Uh, need a motion for approval of minutes from the work session of March 9th and the regular meeting of March 16th. Uh, again, just a quick reminder to everybody. Need is being recorded and for motions and seconds uh, need board members to chime in first with uh, first. so moved Gano second Bowman thank you properly moved and seconded any comments or discussion corrections to the minutes otherwise all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. oh uh, oh shoot aye. Wait, uh, do we need to do this as voice vote also, or just individual motions? Do we I know? Think, I think no. adjournment. Okay, Brian, what, all right. Brian, I've done a lot of these. What's worse be works best is you just say all in favor and, and ask for opposed to, to chime in. Other than that, it just passes. Okay. All right. That's, that's fine. You don't have to do it. Yep. yep. Um, uh, okay. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chime in. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next item is a presentation or discussion on the budget update. Jeff, assuming that's you, Jeff. Yes. Okay. So take me a minute here. Do you need to share? Yes. Okay, we can see it. You can see that? You're good? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so tonight we'll be asking you to approve our proposed final budget document that will be made available for public review on the prescribed Pennsylvania Department of Ed form 2028. The 2028 is our budget document. So we'll post this on the website and we'll have a hard copy available in our office uh, for when we open. Uh, so remember, nothing in this budget uh, that you're approving tonight is final. Revenues, expenditures, and the millage rate all can be changed between tonight and in June when you are asked to approve the final budget. 
So if you recall back in December, we completed a preliminary budget with 5.79 million in expenditures and 5.64 million in revenue. And that also included the Act One tax index of 3.2% and use of fund balance of $1 million to balance the budget. Also in December, the board passed a resolution to stay at or below the Act One index. And what that did was that limited any proposed tax increase to 3.2%. Okay, so that was all in December. Okay, so we come to today. Uh, a lot has happened since December. The close down of the economy due to the COVID-19 pandemic has dramatically changed our outlook for future revenues. Uh, budget reduction strategies have already been discussed and entered into the budget. Uh, that includes reducing positions, deferring projects, and cutting department budgets. More budget reduction strategies are to be discussed in May and June. Uh, we also know from experience that the economic impact of this event has the potential to be felt in next year, 2021, um, as well as 21, 22, and other future years. Uh, that's from things like real estate tax assessment declines and appeals. Uh, we'll also have lower tax collection rates as well as the decline in earned income tax, transfer tax, and interest rates. So that's a lot of, lot of information to take in all at once. Our proposed 2021 budget has been adjusted and will now show total revenues of 54.7 million and total expenditures of 57.5 million, resulting in a deficit of 2.7 million or a deficit of 2.2 million when you back out the budgeted contingency of 500. So, uh, so that's a big change from December, a deficit of 1 million to now a deficit of 2.2 million after already taking $500,000 worth of expenditures out. So the expenditure changes since December, what are those changes that we made? So we had already discussed the Pennsylvania School Employees Retirement System budget reduction. Uh, the rate we estimated back in December uh, was higher than what was certified. So we were able to reduce the budget expenditures by $53,000 because of that certified rate being lower. Uh, the bond refinancing that we just did uh, uh, will allow us to reduce uh, expenditures by another $24,000. Uh, and then our second look at our health benefit trends from the fall through the spring resulted in a slightly lower percentage increase so we can reduce the budget by $10,000 because of that. However, since the COVID-19 shutdown, We've, we've started to work on other budget reduction strategies and have made changes to the proposed final budget. In our facilities and operational budget, we're deferring $100,000 worth of equipment purchases. Our athletic requests have been reduced by $14,000. And through attrition of positions, we've been able to reduce the budget by $317,950 15 in combined salary and benefit expenditures. These budget adjust adjustments combined are over a half million in reductions to expenditures. <coughs> Revenues. Um, many of our 2021 and possibly 21, 22 and other future state revenues will be affected by this pandemic. The Pennsylvania Association of School Business Officials is they're estimating that the state will be $4 billion short in revenue uh, and their revenue budget is $34 billion. So that's quite a bit of money. Uh, those losses will definitely adversely affect our state revenues for next year. The good news is that the legislature passed Act 13, which protects our state revenues for 1920. So we believe everything that we had budgeted for state revenue wise, we will still receive this year. 
So local revenues will definitely be affected by this uh, economic uh, downturn. Local revenues will be uh, adversely affected for this year uh, indefinitely in 2021 and possibly even future years. With the high unemployment rate, it's likely we will experience a lower collection rate of taxes that will affect this year's delinquent taxes. Those are taxes we collect in April, May, and June. And then this could negatively impact next year's annual taxes, you know, our regular tax bills that we send out in July. Mills. Uh, we've already seen that this is going to affect our mills. We've taken out of the 2021 budget our uh, Act 1 index, which means we're not going to propose increasing mills next year. And in the future, the Act 1 index could possibly be lower uh, because it is based on economic conditions in Pennsylvania. Okay, delinquent and interim taxes, those will be adversely affected. We just kind of just talked about that. The slot fund offset revenue, that's the revenue that we collect that we're able to use to give taxpayers the homestead farmstead uh, reduction. So uh, if that slot fund dries up, then we will have uh, less money to give out I believe for 2021, the revenue has already been collected. So I don't expect it will impact 2021, but 21-22 could be affected and we might not have as much to give to the taxpayers for the homestead farmstead reduction. For assessments, we, might, we may see more assessment appeals this summer. So what will happen is that would really affect the 21-22 fiscal year. Uh, assessment appeals for 2021 have already been done. Uh, so we can see that, you know, this is affecting not only next year, but the following year. Um, earned income tax, the Lancaster County Tax Collection Bureau, that's who collects our EIT, uh, has come up with estimates for tax reductions starting at about 6% this spring and as much as 15% in the beginning of the 2021 budget year. So we're definitely gonna have to reduce our EIT estimates. Um, we also get money through the realty transfer tax. Every time a property is sold, we get a small percentage of that. I believe that as the um, economy has slowed down, those transactions have slowed down and we'll see less money. Um, and then interest earnings. We've already seen a reduction in our interest earnings for the first quarter of this year. Uh, I highly doubt those rates will come back anytime soon in the summer and possibly not until uh, through much of next year. So considering all this information, what changes have we made to the budget uh, as far as revenues go since December? So for the proposed final budget, we've reduced local variable revenues by close to $340,000. And that's to account for a reduction in the interest revenue, earned income tax, and some of those other local revenues we just looked at. We are also reducing the current real estate tax revenue by removing the Act 1 tax increase to 3.2%. And we are using a lower estimated assessment to account for possible lower final assessments and lower collection rates. In January, we had actually added the governor's proposed increase in state funding to the budget. <laughs> so that was in January. However, now, as we had already seen, the state is going to be short on their revenue. So it just makes sense that we remove the $100,000 increase in state funding from the 2021 budget. And then we also have some retirement and social security subsidy revenue to remove that corresponds to the reduction in the retirement rate. So remember we had used a higher retirement rate in December. Uh, the retirement rate was a little bit lower, so will be the subsidy on that. And then we have some retirement and social security subsidy to reduce from revenues because of our attrition of positions. However, 
there is some good news and positive developments uh, concerning the 2021 budget. So last year, the highest cost increase in our budget was the increase in the number of charter school students. Fortunately, that number has declined significantly. Our current enrollment is 169 students. And when we wrote the 2021 budget in December, we budgeted for 172 students. This is a significant decline considering charter school tuition rate for regular education students is approximately 14. Thousand and special ed students are approximately 35,000. So our 2021 budget will include tuition for the 172. So that's good news. Another positive development is our healthcare experience for the year. Now remember our benefits are self-funded we don't pay an insurance company a premium for our employees. We actually we pay the actual medical invoices. So our costs can vary from year to year depending on the medical needs of our employees. Um, however, over time, we believe this model has been more economical than simply paying IBC or somebody else a premium. So in 2017-2018, that was a significantly challenging year for a health plan and considering that we had several high cost claims. So you can see that on the left hand side of this chart. 2018-2019 claims were much lower and you can see that kind of in the middle of the chart. And the good news is, is that so far expenditures from July 2019 through this past February have been uh, below budget and are lower compared to those two other years. So this has allowed us to charge less money to the general fund for our healthcare expenditures. We also believe that we could end the year increasing the healthcare fund fund balance because of this low experience. Some more good news. Uh, for the past decade, the Pennsylvania School Employees Retirement System uh, or PISER's cost has been one of the largest budgetary line item increases for the district. The good news is that in 2021, the increase is the lowest increase that we've seen in that time period. Here you can see that the increase in the employer rate, that's the rate the district pays to PISER's, is increasing from 34.29 to 34.51. Uh, the dollar increase in the 2021 budget due to this rate increase is actually less than $40,000. Uh, so that's really good news. Um, however, I, I do have to point out that last year, PISER's fund used uh, interest earnings of 7.68% uh, for their budget. Uh, I believe that their earnings this year will not even come close to 7.68%. So we should be prepared to see the employer contribution rate again rise in the future and possibly rise at a higher rate than we're seeing this year. But at least for this year, it's the lowest it's been in a long time. Also noteworthy in our 2021 budget are the effects of our debt service refinancing this past winter. We were able to retire higher interest rate bonds with lower rate bonds and also borrow an additional $7.5 million to fund our capital projects for the next several years. While our actual debt service expenditures will increase, our budget does not have to increase to cover these costs. Over the past several years, we were able to refinance some of our higher bonds and enjoy a few years of one-time savings. So every year, year you would hear me say, oh, we've got one-time savings and debt service of a couple hundred thousand this year. Um, so that's now, um, we are just now returning to the level of debt that we had expected. Uh, so our debt service level is now catching up to what we had budgeted. So that is good news. Now let's look at a summary of the 2021 budget and changes from the current budget. For 2021, that, that's the middle column of numbers here, total expenditures are 57,451,400. The total increase in the 2021 budget is 732, can you see that at the bottom? 
$732,669. That's a 1.3% increase. And then budgetary increases uh, can be seen in the right-hand column under variances. So total budgeted salaries are increasing by $67,500 or 0.3 of 1%. This modest increase is due to the fact that the budget accounts for less total positions uh, through attrition than the current year budget does. All that combined with um, contracted salary increases. So I believe that total salaries will continue to be reduced before the final uh, budget is approved in June, uh, since some of our uh, budget reduction strategies still need to be discussed. Benefits are increasing by 102,000. Uh, the retirement rate is increasing to 34.51%, and our healthcare projections indicate that we should consider a 5.34% increase in the premium calculations. However, uh, with the decrease in contributions to employee health savings accounts, um, and then that favorable healthcare monthly cost that we saw, uh, plus attrition uh, to positions, the net change in combined benefits is a total increase of 102,000. And that's also less than 1%. So that's a fairly modest increase. Uh, the outside professional services are increasing by $398,000. The majority of that is through uh, CCIU professional services within our um, special education uh, program. Facilities, rentals, repairs, and maintenance services increasing by $75,000. So um, much of that is in non-capital projects identified uh, for us to do through the maintenance department this year. Also rent at the Homeland Security program budget is increasing by 13,900. And then we're adding an additional $8,000 to account for possible 1.5% increase in some of the other uh, uh, contracts in that area. The transportation, Insurance and tuition line item area is actually decreasing by 51,000. So our tuition to the technical high school vocational program, which is part of that, is increasing by 10,000. Um, and that's because their tuition rate is going up. Our three-year average membership in that program is actually uh, re re reducing. So I'm hoping that we'll actually see a reduction in that next year. Uh, the good news that we talked about the charter school tuition shows up in this line item. We have a reduction of $420,000. And then our transportation contract is scheduled to increase by 1.75%, which is approximately $56,000. And then we also have an additional $17,000 in there to uh, provide for insurance uh, increase for a pollution and uh, data breaches, which are, they're both new insurance coverages. We've talked about the pollution one um, and we will talk about data breaches uh, soon before the budget is approved so that you can uh, get an idea of what we're hoping to accomplish with that additional insurance cost. And then the supply budget is increasing by 158,000. The majority of the increase comes from the athletic budget we've talked about quite a bit this year. That increase is $78,000. And then our CTE programs have um, an increase in their supply line area too. And then all other supply increases are 52,000. Um, however, again, that is one of our budget reduction strategies that we'll be looking at, so it's possible that line item could also decrease before the uh, June budget. E equipment is increasing by $40,000. This increase is mostly due to the K through four uh, grade one-to-one -one, uh, technology equipment purchase recommendation from the EdTech committee. Uh, and then the CTE programs have a $28,000 uh, equipment increase request. However, all of that is netted against the $100,000 decrease from all the other equipment uh, budgets 
uh, mostly through operations and facilities. And then finally, dues and fees and fund transfers, those two line items combined are decreasing by 59,000. These two budgetary items account for our debt service and contingency with a few minor other budget items. So you remember our total debt service net expenditures is actually increasing this year. However, the budget level was always too high. So we're actually able to match the budget to the actual expenditures. So that'll show up as a slight reduction in uh, debt service budgetary wise. Again, all these increases equals 732,000, which is a 1.3% increase in expenditures. Uh, so here, I just wanted to provide you with a graphical representation of those expenditures. You can see that almost 60% of our budget is in the form of salary and benefits. Um, as we saw, total increases in both of those areas are both under 1%. And then the next largest area is the transportation insurance and tuition area. So we already looked at revenues in the proposed final budget compared to revenues uh, way back in December. Uh, uh, however, now I would like to take a look at a comparison of the current budget, the 2019-2020 budget to the 2021 uh, proposal. So as you can see, overall revenue shows an actual decrease of $305,000. Total local revenues is a, a reduction of $362,000. This is due to the decline in the interest revenue, the EIT revenue combined with lower assessment and only a rebalancing of real estate taxes. So there is no tax increase that shows up in that local revenue. State revenue is increasing by 57,000. However, as I had said before, we're not we're assuming we'll get no increase in state revenue for basic ed funding or special ed funding. However, with our new bond uh, refinancing, our bond uh, subsidy revenue is increasing by 57,000 and that has already been approved. So we will definitely get that revenue. And then retirement and social security revenue subsidy rates are increasing. Uh, so that's an additional $10,000. Federal revenue is decreasing by $1,000, and that's just based on our current grant award amounts. And then the proposed use of fund balance, including all these revenues, is 2.721. So that, so we'll need $2.7 million to balance the budget document. Okay, so, and this is a visual of where our revenues come from. As you can see, 70%, the majority of our revenue is from local sources, 28% is from state sources, and that's from things like basic ed funding, special ed funding, transportation reimbursement, retirement, social security subsidy, and some smaller equipment grants. And then only 2% is from federal sources, and that's our title programs and access revenue. Our local sources, so this is all local revenue, 90% uh, of our local revenue comes from current delinquent real estate taxes. So as we talked about those possible declines in uh, tax assessments and collections, you can see that 90% of our budget uh, relies on that. So, so it, it, it does make for a little bit of a scary situation next year. 6% uh, six, 6 comes from earned income tax and half percent from interest revenue all of which have been reduced since the economic shutdown. And then the other 4% is combined revenue. Uh, all of these could be adversely affected. So we'll need to watch these closely between now and June when we do the final budget. So in December, we were estimating that a 0% tax increase would result in $160,000 in new real estate tax revenue. And that would be through assessment growth. So the slide that you're looking at now, um, the area that's highlighted where you see the 132,000, that's the increase in total, total, tax, total tax revenue. That was actually about 160 back in December. So that's been reduced to 132,000, uh, again, due to economic situation. 
also, as you can see on this chart, if we rebalance only, and that's what's highlighted here, that's not a tax increase, that's a rebalance of our tax uh, between Chester County and Lancaster County. Again, that comes out to a use of fund balance of the 2.7 million. So we've talked about using 2.7 million to balance that fund, uh, to balance our general fund fund balance. So where does that come from? Well, on this graph, you can see our fund balance available balance to, to balance the 2021 budget can be seen on this chart. It's uh, the, the uh, orange uh, column at the far right. And as of June 30th, 2019, it was just over $8.2 million. And we had budgeted for the 2019-2020 fiscal year to end with a deficit of 800,000. So that would have reduced the 8.2 million down to about 7.4 million balance available at June 30th, 2020 to use for next year's budget. However, due to the current shutdown, we're now projecting that we may end this year with a small increase in the fund balance. Um, actual revenues collected in April through August will determine if that happens or not. But for planning purposes, we can assume that we still have the 8.2 million available to balance the 2021 budget. So here uh, you can see the effect of a 0% increase along with rebalancing of our current tax rates. So in the yellow highlighted area, the first column of numbers shows what a median a Chester County uh, assessed home would be. Uh, that property would see a $12 increase in 2021. And a median assessed property in Lancaster County would actually see a decrease of $21 in 2021. Again, this is from rebalancing. This is not a tax increase. So we'll continue to discuss more budget reduction strategies and revenue projections during the May and June uh, meetings. And then in June, we will have the final budget uh, for you to pass. So are there any questions? Comments or questions for Jeff? Jeff, just one, one comment. So from your slides, the state is contributing contributing 28%. Like, is that like the all time low? Weren't they at like 34% at one point? I mean, I know they were 50, but has that even decreased? Um, it seems really low. Yeah, I would have to go back and compare that to prior years. Uh, what ha What's happening is um, the, the retirement subsidy and social security subsidy have risen, but only because the expense side has risen. All of the other subsidies, yeah, are lower. And then some of the grant revenue that we would get um, ha has been lower. So while that percentage might be pretty close to the last few years, probably less than it was several years ago, in reality, it's even much less because we're really looking at the bulk of that being Social Security and retirement subsidy. Yes, good point. You're absolutely right. Jeff, on a whole other matter, what are we? What, what's the deal with uh, charter school payments and things like that, and uh, requirements that we have to maintain? So right now, right now, charter schools um, under Act 13, they can't add students to their roles. Um, they can only bill us for students that were enrolled as of March 13th. However, Act 13 does say that uh, charter schools, just like our school, uh, um, the 180 day rule no longer counts. They will be getting their full tuition rate uh, for the rest of the year, uh, which is unfortunate, but um, you know, that's kind of what happened under that Act 13. Uh, the good news is, is that if they, uh, recruit any of our students, they're no, we don't have to pay them. And as of this morning, I've only heard of one student uh, that has been enrolled in one of the charter schools. They will bill us for it, we will not pay it, and we don't have to under that Act 13. 
Did that answer the question, Brian, or were you looking for other information? Yeah, no, that answered that question. But I was, and also too, in the back door, I was, was figuring out how does that, how does this impact our like payments to the IU since we, you know, they're not doing services, you know, and I realize there's different levels of services um, that, that the IU does for the district. What, uh, how does that impact uh, our, our payments to them? So, um, so uh, anything that was considered tuition uh, to any of the, the intermediate unit or, you know, charter schools, that uh, they're being made whole. But anything that's being provided by a professional, they're not providing those services right now. They're not being paid. And out of the uh, million plus uh, of expenditures that we do not have to expend this year, some of the IU professionals are not being paid. Uh, an awful lot of our one-to-one -one aides that were here uh, through the IU or through other uh, uh, organizations aren't being paid. Uh, most of them were from, from a company, CCRN, which uh, uh, not so much through the IU. So, so there's definitely a loss there, uh, but anything considered tuition, we do have to pay for the entire year. Okay, thank you. Under those services, we're still, we're still using the um, expertise of the math coach. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, using, yeah because yeah. They're, they're still, we're still actively engaged in instruction. Um, okay, thanks. Yes. There were a couple of things as you were going through the presentation, Jeff, I just wanted to call out that uh, we are proposing, it's not final, but we are uh, proposing a 0% uh, tax increase for next year's um, budget. Um, the, the question I had, um, and I know you're gonna present on it uh, later, but the insurance policy on data breaches, um, it's an area actually that um, I had emailed uh, Michelle about uh, the exposure right now to phishing attacks. And um, again, you don't have to answer now, but if you could include uh, in the insurance uh, coverage, the um, uh, uh, exposure that we have with uh, data loss, not just data breach, but uh, data loss. Uh, that would uh, that would be good to good to know if the insurance co policy uh, covers uh, yeah. covers that. And then um, uh, just uh, want to thank the administration, and Michelle. Um, uh, seeing the charter school uh, reduction uh, is uh, is great, and it shows uh, the uh, efforts that we've been making to. Um, pull back some of the students and uh, attend here um, are seeing some uh, are, are seeing some benefit and uh, so just uh, good to uh, good to see that thank you and, and Jeff so so to be clear last year at this time we were anticipating that we would be actually using eight hundred thousand dollars in fund balance That's and correct. now it looks like that we may walk away with maybe two hundred thousand in fund balance. Is that, or should I just say zero? <laughs> well, we definitely, we definitely are saving money on uh, a lot of these uh, contracted services that are not providing services and we aren't paying them right now. Uh, and, and I'm hopeful that that will uh, allow us to cover that $800,000. I'm a little guarded against um, what's gonna happen as far as revenue estimates uh, we still have to collect April, May, June, and then accrue some stuff in July and August um, for things like delinquent taxes, uh, uh, EIT, and uh, earned income taxes and other items like that. And, and uh, you know, those revenues could dry up pretty quickly and pretty fast. And it's pretty scary when we compare what's going on now to uh, back in 2008, 2009, uh, Tim Schramm, in PASBO has been working with all of us uh, uh, current business managers to take a look at that and try to estimate how much those reductions could be. Uh, so, so hopefully between the uh, uh, revenue avoid, the expenditure avoidances that we have this year and getting a lot of the revenue we plan on, yes, I think we would have an increase in the fund balance as of June 30th. How much, I'm not sure because those revenues could vary a lot.
but we'll see, we'll keep track of it every month and, and I can uh, give the board an idea of how we're doing and, and where we're ending up. Okay, that helps because I recall the conversation last year was um, we were willing to spend a little more of our fund balance, you know, with the understanding that, you know, you have a couple tough years and we thought last year was one. So it's actually good news to know that now that we're facing a truly difficult, you know, in huge situation now um, that we have that so that we didn't have to end up using 800 last year and on top of that what we're doing now so yeah actually um, the way I would the way I would look at this is this fiscal year is not a windfall for us not by any stretch of the imagination for anyone to think oh we're going to have all this money left over a year end it just isn't going to happen but we are going to cover <laughs> expenses that otherwise we would have had to use fund balance Again, it depends on those variable revenues, and I'm hoping that they don't uh, uh, reduce as much as they possibly could. But so we'll see at year end. But even if we, you know, have a cost avoidance of a couple million dollars, yeah, we already were in the hole 800,000, and we know we're going in next year in the hole. 2.7 million before any other budget reduction. So this is not a windfall for the district by any means. Anybody else think it's rather ironic that the state passed Act 13, which makes us pay all these expenses, but then want to pass something that says we have to have a 0% tax increase. I mean, we already were pointing on that, but I just think it takes some gall for the state to pass that. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Agreed. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, that takes us to information items, no information items. Uh, treasurer's report. Need a uh, need a motion to accept the treasurer's report. Uh, so moved, Bowman. Second. And a second. Sorry, Charlie. Was that you on a second? Yes, sir. Great. Thanks. Uh, properly moved and seconded. Comments? Questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chime in. All right, motion carried. Uh, at the last uh, work session, we discussed items A through. Yep, yeah, sorry. Oh, did I miss? Bills. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, page jumped. Page jumped around. Um, business managers. Business managers report. Uh, Jeff. We are presenting. We are presenting checks from the general fund in the amount of one million three hundred thirteen thousand fourteen dollars and thirty eight cents, in the cafeteria fund in the amount of fifteen thousand six hundred and seven dollars and thirty three cents. And in the capital projects fund in the amount of $123,684.13 for a total of $1,452,305.87. We're submitting these checks for consideration and authorization for payment. And I just wanna point out that the uh, capital projects fund expenditure, the majority of that was uh, for equipment that uh, we had discussed late uh, last year and uh, the board had approved uh, the purchase of that. Um, obviously, knowing what we know now, uh, if uh, the question would come up now, we would probably be deferring this to a future year. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, thanks. Need a, uh, need a motion? I moved, okay, you know. Thank you, Sam. And a second. Second, Bowman. Thank you, Lisa. Yep. Comments, questions? 
All those in favor say aye. <clears throat> aye. Aye. Opposed? Chime in. Thank you. Motion, motion carried. Uh, now, uh, thank you for thank you for pulling me back on that one. We have to pay the bills. Thanks. Um, uh, in the uh, work session last week, we discussed items A through G. Uh, Jerry, I think you need F pulled out. Is that correct? Um, yes, it is. We need to do roll call for A and B. Okay. Um, so we'll just have uh, each one. A has to be one, B has to be one, or those together? Each one. Okay. A so has to be a roll call, B has to be a roll call. A has to be a roll call, B has to be a roll call. All right. Um, so uh, strike that. We're uh, looking at just uh, agenda item A, that the Octorary Board of School Directors approve the 2020-2021 Chester County Intermediate Unit Core Services budget in the amount of $29,085,000. Uh, so moved, you know. Thank you, Sam. And a second? Second. second. Thank you, uh, Lisa Bowman. Uh, comments, questions? All right. Uh, roll call, call for a vote. Um, it'll be a roll call vote. Uh, Jill? Yep. Mr. Fagitor? Yes. Ms. Bowman? Yes. Mr. Zimmerman? Yes. Mr. Fox? Yes. Mr. Hurley? Yes. Mr. Conacher? Yes. Ms. Yelovich? Yes. Mr. Gano? Yes. Mr. Norris? Aye. Nine yes, zero no. Um, <laughs> which takes Aye. us to, <laughs> which takes us to, uh, uh, second item on the agenda B, that the Octora Board of School Directors approve the 2020-2021 Chester County Intermediate Unit Occupational Education Budget in the amount of $30,011,583. Uh, Need a motion. Moved, Gaino. Thank you, Sam, and a second? Second. second. Uh, Charlie, I think you were in there first. Thanks for a second. Comments, second, questions? Second, Zimmerman. What? I think it, I think it was Charlie, Jerry. Um, uh, comments, questions? Uh, all right, roll call vote, Jill. Mr. Hurley. Yes. Mr. Gaino. Er, uh, yay. Mr. Norris. Yes. Mr. Conacher. Yes. Ms. Yelovich. Yes. Mr. Zimmerman. Mr. Zimmerman. Jerry. Yes. Mr. Fox. Yes. Mr. Faggy. Yes. 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 I got you, Jerry. <laughs> Ms. Bowman. Yes. Nine yeses, zero noes. 13 yeses, four. Yeah, it's more like. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, you're getting a little bit of a lag, I think, so it comes through. Who's your internet provider? Sorry about, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, uh, we covered off um, the remaining agenda items C through G. Um, yeah, I keep going in out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jerry, I think you need F pulled out. You need to abstain on F. He does. I actually have a letter signed by yes, him. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jerry. Um, so we'll um, uh, we'll move now on item C through G with F accepted. Uh, need a motion. So moved. Gaino. Thank you, Sam. And a second. Second, Tony. Thank you, Tony. All our comments and questions. Comments or questions. All right, all those in favor say uh, uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, item F, we needed that one pulled out. We read it last week. I need a motion for item F. So moved, Kano. Thank you, Sam. And a second? 
Second, Bowman. Thank you, Visa. Comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? And we have one abstention in Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. All right, I need to get back to, sorry, I've lost the agenda window. Okay, we have uh, uh, two items left, item H, that the Octorera Board of School Directors accept with regret the resignation for purpose of retirement of Ms. K. Minchel as family and consumer science teacher at the Octorera Junior Senior High School at the end of the 2019-2020 school year, hired November 1st, 2020. Need a motion. No moved, Gaino. Thank you, Sam, in a second. 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 Uh, Charlie. I think we got Charlie. Comments, questions? All right, call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Item I, that the Octora Board of School Directors approve the joint petition to stay the 2020 upset tax sales for taxing authorities and political subdivisions within Lancaster County. I move to Kano. Thank you, Sam. In a second. Second, Bowman. So, next questions. Stay is the word we we want to use there. Petition to stay. I guess that's probably what they're call it. I, I think that's what they're calling it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it's weird? I, I guess stay the execution. It's a hold. Yeah, hold essentially, right? If you would have yeah. looked at your packet, Mr. Gano, you would have seen that's the title on top of it. I did, Jill. <laughs> Still think it's weird. So, when you guys see each other again, will it be hugs or slaps? <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> any other any other discussion <laughs> or comment? Otherwise, we'll uh, call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. aye. Opposed? Chime in if opposed. Okay. Uh, that takes us through our voting items. Uh, takes us to the policy committee report. Brian, somehow we missed visitors' comments at the beginning. Uh, I don't think there's anything we can do about it now. I'm just pointing that out for future. You, you see yeah, visitor comment for agenda items. I apologize if I uh, if I. Right. Hopefully nobody had one, but just did miss for it. future. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. All right. You ready for the policy committee? Yes, report? policy committee report. Yep. Uh, as we mentioned, we went over the, uh, the policies for second reading. There were either no changes or very minimal changes that we made last month. And moving forward, we will not have any policy next month. And we're not quite sure if we will, that will continue into June depends on what's going on. That was it. Thank you. Comments or questions for Lisa? Takes us to facility committee report. Brian. Yeah, uh, earlier we discussed the um, use of the athletic facilities during the shutdown period. It's anticipated at this point that'll at least be till uh, July uh, 1st. Uh, the track will remain open, uh, however, during the day. Uh, for the time being. Uh, we also had a, a, a brief conversation about uh, potential night security coverage. We uh, had a conversation about the uh, baseball, uh, varsity baseball field construction update. Uh, the roof repairs um, are coming along. We also determined that we will be putting off the uh, carpet replacement and painting uh, that was going to take place in the district office. Uh, we are going to accept a uh, STARS bid for a replacement of a hot water tank in the high school. The intermediate school has a brand new uh, filter system in place for the drinking water 
Uh, hopefully that eliminates some of the uh, fine sediment, uh, sediment issues that that building has occurred had on occasion. Uh, we learned about some damage done to a uh, shed barn in the junior high uh, that was probably wind related. Uh, we found out that the PTO is looking to install something called a Gaga pit uh, at several of our uh, lower building schools. Uh, more uh, information come, come on that. And um, we uh, got an update on our lead test for our drinking water. Unfortunately, four of our 20 samples that were recently submitted were over the uh, 15 parts per billion limit. And we, of course, continue to work with the um, DEP on, you know, continued mitigation of that and uh, we'll have updates as we proceed through the process. And that was it. Great. Thank you, Brian. Comments or questions on the facility committee report? All right, Brian, back to you for the IUCAT board representatives report. Yeah, briefly, uh, the IU uh, passed the, uh, obviously, the uh, OCAD and the uh, CAT budgets uh, for 2021. Uh, we just approved our version of that. It had to get done uh, by the end of April, I believe. The, um, we also discussed the refinancing of a bond issue, and we did the uh, uh, first reading of the 2021 marketplace budget and the marketplace pricing schedules. Uh, they routine personnel issues, of course, and then they passed uh, the, uh, the uh, memorandum of understanding, as we all did, in order to support uh, paying uh, support staff. And that was it. Brian, and what that, was meeting was, that meeting was virtual. What was the date of the meeting, Brian? Uh, March 18th. Thank you. We won't be meeting uh, in April till the 29th. Uh, forget the reason. They pushed it back. Great. Thanks. Any other comments, questions? All right. That takes us to old business, no old business, new business, any new business? Okay. Other items and announcements? I don't think we have any. Uh, visitors' comments. Uh, so uh, we do have two attendees in our uh, virtual meeting. Um, for those people on the line, if you as a, a visitor would like to make comment, uh, you can click within a window to raise your hand and I will unmute your line and uh, you'll be able to provide a visitor comment. So I'm asking uh, at this point, any visitor comments uh, in general? These are visitor comments in general. I don't see hands raised. Uh, Joey, I'm not seeing hands raised. You, okay, all right, very good. Um, that takes us to administrator comments. So the team is with us tonight and um, being that we're in a Zoom room, maybe we'll start with uh, Dr. Tahal. Sure, good evening everybody. Uh, today um, began the second phase of our continuity, continuity of education plan. Teachers uh, provided learning activities for students this week that were designed to begin to advance the curriculum. Um, we are still working to, to make sure that we engage as many students as possible. I know as Dr. Orner shared with you last Monday, we were still distributing iPhones and hotspots to families who still um, were unable to, to connect to the internet. Uh, <clears throat> we are, are moving forward. Dr. Orner provided a, a phone blast last Friday, um, alerting families and students to the fact that we were moving, we were moving out of our optional review and enrichment phase and into our uh, required advancing the curriculum phase. The building principals today followed that up with a more specific message um, relating to each of their buildings. So the word is out and uh, we are moving forward. And I believe the building principals will give you a, a little idea of how things are going. And we look forward to providing you with a more comprehensive overview during the education committee meeting next Monday. Alrighty. Uh, Krista Lease is with us tonight. Krista, if you wanna jump in next with the PLC update. Well, good evening, everyone. 
Um, so I was doing some data review today I'd like to share with you. So we have about 300 family pickup devices for their kids. And of, uh, we have about 458 students right now. And I was really excited to go through all, we only have four families right now that are not connected because they don't have an internet or they don't have a device. Um, we have about 27 families who have internet, have a device, but they just haven't connected. So you know, all in all, I'm looking at about 6% of our school population right now is not actively engaged, which I think is awesome considering um, we have just been doing review and enrichment activities. Um, so Seesaw is a platform for using, and teachers can send out activities that are in Seesaw. They can also create their own activities. And what they do is they're posting activities in ELA, math units are posting, our counselors have been posting, and I've been doing a weekly announcement. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, families connected through the Seesaw family app. And uh, I feel like we're in a great we're in great shape to start our new learning. Um, we had a lot of support with our nutrition specialists and our counselor, uh, reaching out to families and making sure everybody knew how to log on and log in. Uh, it was a bit of a painful process, uh, but we feel like we're rounding the corner and, uh, you know, feel really good about the amount of kids that we have logged on and doing assignments. Um, any questions about anything about what the PLC is doing? All right. Thank you. Uh, Brian Deacon, if you want to step up next. Sure. Good evening, everyone. So similar to what Krista just reported, um, things at the elementary school are going very well um, additionally. So uh, as of today, this evening, we have seven families that have not uh, started posting assignments yet on Seesaw. Uh, again, that's only seven. We've been in contact with um, all of those seven families. They all have devices. Uh, there's one family that we're still trying to work on a internet solution for. Uh, because of their location where, where, where they live and, and the hotspot's not working too well there. Um, but in terms of the, the rest of the families, we, they all have the devices, they have internet. It's just a matter of getting them to uh, start posting on Seesaw. But I feel like we're in pretty good shape. It's been um, obviously a lot, a lot of work over the past few weeks. Like Krista said, um, Josh Irons and Michelle Moran spent a good deal of time last week contacting families and making sure they were uh, set up with what they needed to to access um, everything on Seesaw. So again, we're in pretty good shape. I'm feeling good about things. Righty. Christian Hallard is with us tonight as well. Hi, everybody. Um, at the intermediate school, um, I, I also believe things are going well. Um, <clears throat> today, um, the school counselor intervention specialist and I went through uh, a list of students who teachers have listed that have not connected at all. Um, and um, this afternoon, the list was at 71 students that haven't gotten on to do something, um, some of their, their learning activities. Uh, but I, I noticed that there were some comments on some of those 71 that the kids were starting to get on. There were a few students who I know just got devices and got internet hookup. Um, for uh, on Friday of last week. So we're gonna continue to monitor that number. Um, Heidi Ferry, Lisa Steiner and I will be reaching out to those families to see um, what, what is, is keeping them from um, getting on. I think that, that in our case, um, the students are a lot more independent with it. And so we're, we're um, gonna be working with individual students to get them on um, as opposed to the parents who were getting on Seesaw um, in grades K through four. The learning platform is um, Google Classroom for the intermediate school. Students have been using that. And so um, from that end, um, things have been going really well. Um, I asked uh, the teachers for some feedback about how things have been going so far. Um, some positives that, that I, I got were that 
the realization that being pushed out of uh, one's comfort level can actually be a good thing was something that somebody reported. Um, teachers were really impressed that lots of kids were wanting to connect to the teachers and their classmates early on in this process on their own without prompting from teachers. Um, and they're also impressed um, to see students using technology on their own to collaborate with one another. Um, there are areas of need still. They want us to keep up the uh, positive and uh, the constructive criticism. Um, many are still struggling to figure out how to manage home life, uh, teaching, and all the new learning that we're, we're well, they're having to do to, to be able to deliver instruction this way. So um, it's still a work in progress, but I can say my overall observation, um, and this is uh, for staff, parents, students, um, throughout this entire um, process, everyone has been extremely flexible and willing to do whatever it takes to, to make the learning happen. And it's been a great experience. All righty. Mike Brooks is with us tonight. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm gonna kind of go a little off script and provide everybody an update um, on the end of the year activities. It seems that that's the big question um, and what's causing a lot of the, the anxiety and um, with the um, secondary uh, parents. And, and just to update on where we are with prom, graduation, baccalaureate, as well as some of our um, other end of the year activities. Um, it's a priority for us um, at the seven to 12 billion to make sure we honor the accomplishments of the class of 2020. Uh, we feel that the best approach to take at this point is a cautious approach. We understand districts around us have already set dates in July and made decisions on when um, they're gonna have commencements. We feel that's not best for us. Um, we don't feel it's best to make a decision in April for something that's gonna occur in June or even, even a little later. Um, the situation, there's so much uncertainty. The situation is just continually changing. Um, and you know we're gonna continue to um, monitor the information we get before we make a decision. One thing we have done, we have engaged the senior class officers in discussion um, this past week regarding the end of the year activities. They helped us develop a survey that was sent out to all the seniors today. Um, and as of the start of the meeting, there was roughly 70 responses to the senior, to the survey, um, getting their input on the end of the year activities. Um, we feel it's important for them to have feedback because this is their graduation, their prom, <coughs> their scholarship and award ceremony. So it's important that they have some uh, feedback and, and, and allow an avenue for them to provide that to us. Um, once we get the results and the back and the data back, um, that'll help us along with the different guidance we get from the CDC, um, the Department of Health and Education and making the decision of when and how we hold um, these end of the year activities. And again, our goal is to do what's best for our students um, and the best way to honor the class of 2020. Um, so if the board saw, I don't know, in the shared board docs, um, there is a copy, because I know some of you don't have kids uh, in the school school district right now. We wanted to make sure that you got a copy, you were able to see um, the breadth of the survey and the work that went into that. I'm really, really proud of the team that we engaged our kids first. That was very important you know, to me that we hear from our kids. And I'm excited that we have 71 responses to that at this point, and I suspect that that's going to grow. So, all right, Lisa Mack is with us tonight. Hello. Uh, on those lines, um, there's been much much discussion about the OA Best Expo, and it is with a heavy heart that we've come to the decision that um, the expo be canceled this year. There's many factors that came in to that decision. Um, you know, obviously with the shutdown being in mid-March, um, a lot of the student activities and preparation, art projects, science projects, weren't able to be completed. Um, you know, preparing for the demonstrations and also, you know, in respect with our community and our business and industry partners, you know, they do a lot of their promotion of their products and services. And, you know, in this difficult situation where they're built, their businesses are shut down, we didn't want to put them in, um, you know, uh, 
a difficult situation due to the orders of the governor. So we've kind of decided that um, we will just focus on next year's OI Best Expo and making it better. So that's, that's a decision that um, Dr. Orner and I have been talking about with several other members um, of the committee. So uh, to continue on with the OAC TEP team, um, we've been doing a lot of different types of professional development with TAP. Uh, last week was individual meetings with the math and literacy consultant together, and it really was a pretty awesome experience to see the teachers. Um, they met each met with the consultants for an hour as a team and from the beginning of the presentation, you could see the stress level of the teachers to the end where they felt much more comfortable um, and reassured and supported. So that was a really um, big plus. We continue to move forward with uh, progressing through um, receiving Perkins funding and moving towards that goal. Um, the OAC team, and as many people know, a lot of uh, the pro a lot of the learning is work-based learning projects, but in the labs. So for instance, woodworking it, and we're trying to find really creative ways for the woodworking teacher and, and um, you know, to be able to uh, have students continue their learning, but with the materials that they would have at home and reaching out to their OACs. So the OACs have been really critical and really supportive. So that's really a nice thing to see how our partners are coming together to support our educational learning. And then uh, continue to work just as um, Mr. Brooks does with our um, Homeland Security and Protective Service uh, graduation, student graduation. We have 21 seniors graduating. I will be setting up a Zoom, or I have set up a Zoom meeting to meet with those seniors to get ideas and their input about how we should proceed with this. So we're looking forward to some good things to come. Thank you. All righty. Thank you, team. I appreciate you being here tonight. I appreciate the updates. Uh, does the board have any questions for us this evening? I just have a quick question, and I know we'll talk about it at the education committee meeting, but I, I just were concerned with that, that 71 number mm -hmm. at the intermediate school seemed really high. Yep. Um, so I don't know if that's the same as the junior senior high, you know, what that's like and is, you know, have you contacted every parent, you know, it just seemed like a really high number and I didn't know if that was a common occurrence across districts, the older they get, the less engaged, I don't know, that just seems high, but I know we'll talk about it next week as well. But yeah, I was uh, just on that point also, uh, that also stuck out um, compared to like uh, primary learning center, I think it was less than a dozen. Um, and uh, if, if we had had contact with these students and then lost it, because it's been a month. And, uh, and so like what contact have we had, if any, during that uh, time as well? And if it's just as we've started to advance curriculum, they haven't checked in now, um, but, uh, but they had some engagement in the uh, past few weeks, it would be good to, good to know that. Uh, and news about OA Best. Really sorry to uh, to to hear that, but I I'm, I'm now looking forward to next year. We uh, we held off on announcing that for as long as we could because we didn't want people to begin to think, well, if they canceled OA Best, they're going to cancel everything else, and that's not the case. So we've been very careful in the communication that mm -hmm. people understand the why. You know, our kids haven't been in school since March 13th. That's the first consideration. It's a culmination event of student achieve achievement, K to 12. And when your kids aren't available to you face-to-face -to, -face to be able to do that work, it's really hard to showcase that work. You know, so there's the student achievement piece, but you know, there's also um, all the business and the industry folks and the community partners that, you know, there's, there's so much that goes into that event. So um, we would just ask that, you know, if people begin to latch on to this idea of, well, they canceled away best, does that mean they're canceling the prom and baccalaureate and senior awards and commencement? No, that's not the case. This was the first one that we had to get out in front of. And um, so Lisa has done a really nice job of explaining to folks why and connecting with folks that they're not just getting a letter in the mail. You know, she's making those phone calls to folks. And, uh, and I think there's sort of a 
sigh of relief from some folks like, oh, okay, this is one less thing that I have to be concerned about. They're, they're not going to try and have this yeah. at the end of May. And I've contacted all of our sponsors and they are all just saying, just hold off for the sponsorship for next year. There's no problems with that. So that was a relief as well. Bigger and better next year. Bigger and better. Good, good, good. All right. Thank you. Great, thank you. And thanks everybody for being here tonight. It is good to see everybody. Um, any other comments, questions? Otherwise, then we'll go to uh, board comments. Any board comments? Um, I just want to thank everybody, and and also, and again, we can talk about it. This at the education committee, you know, um, are we reaching out to parents and and giving them tools and tips as well? Um, is it an individuals, you know? teachers doing that or is there some kind of help class for parents? We'll uh, talk about that next week, but we have become a parent help desk. I think uh, everybody has a hand in that in this point. In fact, uh, Jill too, man's a phone and, and uh, she's spends a lot of time trying to help mom and dad through some things, but it's been all hands on deck. Um, you know, our parents are trying to balance a lot of this you know, I've said this, you know, before that some of them are working from home. They have multiple kids at home and um, it's, it's been a task. It's been a chore for sure. But I, I think all of us are playing a hand in being that parent workshop, that plant, that parent help desk, and, and we'll certainly provide a board, you know, the board some more insight into that next week. Thanks. Okay. Any other board comments? All right, then I will move to um, announce the following meetings. The policy committee meeting um, met earlier this evening, uh, Monday, April 20th at six o'clock in the junior high multipurpose room and Zoom. Uh, we followed that meeting with the facility committee meeting also this evening immediately uh, following the policy committee meeting and it was also in the junior high multipurpose room and Zoom. Um, we had a um, executive committee meeting for safety, security, and legal um, at the conclusion of the facility committee meeting this evening, and we will have another executive committee meeting for legal following this session. Um, our education committee meeting uh, will be next Monday, April 27th at 6 p.m. in the junior high multipurpose room and Zoom. Our this policy committee meeting will be Monday, May 11th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Location TBD. I'm guessing we're hoping maybe we're back all here and not in Zoom, but um, we'll see. A facility committee meeting uh, will be Monday, May 11th, 2020, immediately following the policy committee meeting. Our next regularly scheduled work session, Monday, May 11th, 2020 at 7 p.m. in the junior high school multipurpose room. And the Finance Committee meeting uh, will be Monday, May 18th at 6 p.m. Uh, location TBD. Our next regularly scheduled board meeting will be Monday, May 18th, 2020, 7 p.m. in the Junior High School Multipurpose Room. And I need a motion for adjournment. Moved, Gaino. Thank you, Sam, and a second. Second, Bowman. Thank you, Lisa. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yep. Okay, um, we'll move now to executive session. Thank you everyone, just stay here. I'll stop the recording and everybody else can, uh, can leave. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank Good night. You. Thank you. Good night. Good night.